of the universe knows what it's like and knows the effects of the inability to process our pain and, and what happens when we don't bring our pain to a place of closure. In Genesis chapter 37, we're going to see that Joseph's torn coat represents some unresolved, devastating, excruciating, painful experiences where there never was closure. Hello, somebody. I'm going somewhere with this. Jacob is going to be told that his son is dead, but his son isn't dead. And he never got to say goodbye to Joseph. He never got to see with his own eyes that Joseph was dead. He never touched the corpse. He never saw the corpse. He never really was able to, to have anybody with an eyewitness say, I saw him die. So now he's in a situation where a coat is being presented to him and he doesn't know what went wrong. This is the most shocking circumstance of his entire life life. I want you to know that God is placing this in the scripture, not just so that we can understand the history of the Hebrews, but I want you to know that God is addressing some personal pain in our life. Some areas where we never had closure. There are some people in this room that daddy left when you were five years old and you didn't understand why. And you had to be raised all your life without a daddy. And so therefore there's no, there's no closure. There was never any anybody to explain to you what happened and so through your life you tried to work out all of your personal pain and your personal issues there's others of you that when you got married you had wonderful expectations that your marriage was going to be so successful you didn't understand that the person that you were marrying at the altar really wasn't the one that perhaps God chose or maybe it was the one that God chose but the marriage broke up and and now you're in a situation of great trauma and, and great dilemma and, and you have a, a, a wedding dress or a wedding ring and, and now it no longer has any meaning and it's like a torn coat. You're saying, God, I don't understand it. There's no closure. I don't understand why this thing that I was trusting in went so wrong. Can I get a witness somewhere today? In Genesis chapter 37, the mercy of God and the almighty who created you, the almighty who loves you, the almighty who wants tonight to put his hand on your wound, the almighty who wants to touch your personal pain, the almighty who knows all about the, the, the unresolved, devastating, excruciating areas of your life. In Genesis chapter 37, looking at verse 1, the Bible says, and they took Joseph's coat and they killed a kid of the goats and they dipped the coat in blood and they sent the coat of many colors and they brought it to their father and he said we have found this we have found and know whether it be your son's coat or not can you imagine the trauma of not even knowing if it's Joseph's coat and, and the scripture goes on to say in verse 33 and he knew it and he said it's my son's coat now he has to come to some kind of a conclusion as to what happened to Joseph without closure, without really knowing what happened to his son. And the Bible goes on to say, no doubt an evil beast hath devoured him and cut him in pieces. Verse 35 says, and all his sons and daughters rose up to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. There are some of us in this very room, whether we realize it or not, beloved, whether we realize it or not, we may not be crying literal tears every day, but there are some areas of our life that have some unresolved pain and we have not yet received the comfort in that area. And so therefore we've spent our life in, in trying to work out our pain. We refuse to be comforted because we know what we're trying, what, what we're looking for is not it. We're looking for a daddy or we're looking for a mommy or we're looking for a brother or we're looking for a so we're looking for, for some uh, sort of affirmation and we haven't been able to find it. So we go from one thing to another thing and, and, and it's so much pain inside of us. And these are the unresolved issues that come from the lack of closure in our life. If somebody could have just taken our hand and, and helped us understand, but a little child can't process pain properly. And God wants you to know that he knows all 
all about your personal pain and he understands when you've been in that place that you can't possibly process the pain that was too great for a child to process. I hope somebody here is hearing this today. So here we see it, that Joseph, he thinks Joseph is dead, but in his heart he knows he's not. Something's telling him. There's no closure. This doesn't make sense. He was the one, uh, spiritually, it didn't make sense to Jacob. Because Jacob knew who Joseph was in the spirit. And the promise hadn't yet been fulfilled. And, and he's got all the guilt that he's bearing for the decision that he, that he made to send him to Shechem and, and all of the things that, that he's dealing with. But what the scripture wants to bring to our attention and what the scripture is showing us and what we need to look at is the Bible says, and all of his sons and daughters rose up to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. And every day of his life until the issue was resolved, he was in morning and there are some of us that are in a different type of grief we're grieving over some things and tonight God wants to bring you deliverance I don't know if I have any real people in here tonight so we're carrying all these burdens and we're carrying all these hurts and we've got all these all these issues that we haven't brought closure to yet. And so we're trying to work it out. And so some of us try to work it out with buying more stuff. Or we try to work it out through inordinate affections. Or we try to work it out through anger. Or we try to work it out in one way or in another way. And these are, these are, addictions and these are vices that come into our life that come as a result of the lack of closure and they keep us stuck so we can't get on to the next dimension of destiny in our life we can't go forward but tonight God wants to break you out of some of those personality patterns tonight God wants to bring you into deliverance So we see Joseph's coat, and we see the Almighty not just giving us a story about Joseph, but the Almighty presenting to us personal pain and issues from sudden shocks, from devastated dreams. I don't know what your coat is. Tonight, God wants to ask you, where's your torn coat? Where's your coat? Where's your destiny? What does your torn coat look like? What, what was torn in your life? Was it a relationship with a child that you were depending on? Was it a business? Is it a mother? Is it a father? Is it an aunt? Is it an uncle? Is it, is it a career? Where's your torn coat? And tonight Jesus wants you to know that that coat has been dipped in his blood. And that coat represents a, a resurrected destiny. That God is going to give you back uh, everything that the enemy has stolen out of your life. Hallelujah. In case we don't understand how important the closure concept is, I want you to turn with me to Genesis chapter 48. From Genesis chapter 48 to Genesis chapter 50, we have nothing but closure. Okay, because this is when Jacob is actually dying and the whole passage uh, and all of the preface in the passages have to do with closure on so many issues. And, and we're going to see from Genesis chapter 48 in what we call in a rabbinic sense of scripture a remez because uh, there is a very important uh, prophetically prefigured concept that shows us that when there is not closure, when we don't understand the closure concept, that it can, and when there's failure to bring closure, oftentimes, whether we realize it or not, we can actually experience the death of a destiny. 
That means our destiny can get so far, but we can stay stuck. And that destiny that had great potential, great purpose, and great power can actually go through a death process. And, and, and we can see death to a destiny. And I'm going to show you that from the scripture. Go with me, please, to Genesis chapter 48. And the text that we're going to see that are connected to Genesis 48 is Genesis 48, Genesis 35, and Genesis 31. And we're going to see, dear people of God, how the context conveys how undealt with issues from the past can paralyze our present. Say this with me. Un undealt with issues from the past can paralyze our present. Failure to deal with the past can cause you to die before destiny. Now, let me just say this again. Failure to deal with the pain of the past and failure to deal with issues of the past that are unresolved can cause you to die before destiny. And we see this very, very clear. First of all, in the theological sense of scripture, I want you to examine the text so that we can see this whole passage in the spotlight. So we're going to see the closure concept in a contextual sense of scripture. In other words, we're going to see the verses above that deal with closure, and we're going to see the scriptures uh, below that deal with closure, and we're going to see that the whole passage concerns itself with the the closure concept. Say it with me, closure concept. We're seeing in Genesis chapter 48, looking at verse 1, the scripture says, and it came to pass after these things that one told Joseph, behold, thy father is sick. Now, we already know that the story already continues that that uh, Joseph was alive and that and that Jacob met with Joseph, and this is now the end of Jacob's life. So the scripture is telling us, it begins the passage by saying, behold, thy father is sick. In other words, Jacob is about to die. And now we're going to understand that the words that are going to come out of Jacob's mouth are the words of closure that he wants to bring to Joseph. So, so we understand from the way that the scripture is written that the closure concept begins this passage. And then we also understand when we look at Genesis chapter 48, verse 21, we can see that the passage parallels the, the, the closure concept. I'm going somewhere with this. When we look Look at what Jacob says to Joseph in verse 21, the first line. He says, behold, I die. So these are the last words. How many times do people have the opportunity that's really a gift from God when somebody is ready to go home to be with the Lord and you have that opportunity to visit them. You have that opportunity to stay with them. You have that opportunity to hold their hand because there's closure. It's a, it's a wonderful time because you get to say the words that you never got to say or you get to have some closure to some, some issues that, that were in your life or some personal pain that was in your life. And now we're seeing that Jacob is going to get to finally for the first time bring some closure to some situations in Joseph's life. I hope somebody hears this. And the, the issue here that's going to be dealt with by Jacob to Joseph is not what did your brothers do for you, do to you, because uh, up to this point, Scripture's going to show us, Jacob still didn't know that his brothers sold Joseph into slavery. This is why uh, we, do, we do have it on the braha. He, he prophesies the, the curse of anger upon Levi and Simeon. But up to this point, there's nothing being dealt with by Jacob at all concerning the, the uh, way that the boys treated their own brother. So what he's going to say on his deathbed doesn't have anything to do with the way that the brethren treated Joseph. The issue that Joseph is concerned with and that Jacob knows his son is concerned with, that he's going to address on his deathbed, is why Rachel was buried in the midst of nowhere and why she died in the midst of nowhere. She never got to her destiny. She just died before they got to the promised land. It was never completed. 
interrupted. Something got interrupted and, and he couldn't understand. Why didn't you take my mother and bury her in the cave of Machpelah with, with my grandmother Sarah and with Leah? Why did you allow my mother to be buried in the middle of nowhere? And why did she die before she got to her destiny? I'm going somewhere with it. Touch your neighbor and say closure. God wants to bring some closure into your life. Not just closure on a deathbed. Closure in some relationships. Closure in the way that we've dealt with some of our pain in the past. And, and God's saying that's not the right way to deal with undealt with fatherless issues. That's not the right way to deal with personal rejection issues. God is saying I've got a way for you to deal with your personal pain. Somebody's got to give God the praise. Said enough. And so we see, we see here as we continue, he knows, he's taking Joseph's hand and, and he knows Joseph's concern. Hey, you let my mother die. And, and, and she died there and you, you didn't bury her. And so the very first thing that comes out of Jacob's mouth on his deathbed, his last breath, before he gives the bracha, to all of his children. He takes Joseph aside and he talks to Joseph first and he makes Joseph swear that Joseph will not leave his body in the land of Egypt. That Joseph will take his body after he dies and bring it to the cave of Machpelah where Abraham and Sarah and Isaac and Rebekah are buried. And, and Joseph swears to his father and then he begins to deal with the burden on his heart and the issue. Have you ever kept something secret? Ever known, have you ever had a secret and, 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 and you, you, you just couldn't tell it? Okay, maybe secrets in the family, secrets from your kids, secrets from your aunt, secrets from your uncles. Uh, just, you just had to hold a secret and tried to cover it up all your life. Anybody here ever have a secret, a family secret that you couldn't tell anybody about? Come on now, you gotta have some kind of a, do you all have such perfect families that you don't have one family secret that you couldn't tell somebody about something? I don't know about you, but I got a whole lot of family secrets that I, I had to protect my kids from or protect my grandchildren from. And, and my son who's here tonight would say, mom, why didn't you ever tell us? Well, you know, overprotective parents such as we are, we like to keep everything from our kids. And so we don't tell them how grandmama was or how, uncle was or how this person was or what so-and-so had to go through or who uh, the relative that we want to shut the door on in Italy or whatever the case may be. Hello, somebody. And here we, and here we have or, or some relative in another nation. So, so, so there's some issues. And now we're dealing with some secrets in the family. And, and Jacob's just got to tell Joseph about his beloved mother. Now, we need to understand something. Rachel or Rachel was probably one of the most righteous women in all of Scripture. And there's a reason why God allowed, you know, God can use even our imperfection for his glory. God can use our mistakes and turn them into a miracle. She, she died on the way and she was buried there, but God says, I even have a purpose in this. She died because she never got to destiny because something held her back. She was attached to some things that never had closure in her life. Some issues that she never had closure with, that she brought with her on the way that interrupted a destiny from coming forward. I'm going somewhere with this. I think some of us have some stuff from a few months ago or from a year ago when God said I wanted you to grow up God is saying I want you to deal with that stuff but you thought you could take those idols with you you thought you could take those household gods with you and that you could make it to the next level but God says if you don't deal with those gods if you don't deal with those issues if you don't get past that pain you could die before destiny I hope somebody's hearing this today so we see this this situation here with this family secret and 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 we need to understand that god loved rachel so much this is one of the greatest women in the bible 
and, and for God to take his precious child here. Now, uh, I don't want anybody here to think that there was ever anything not righteous about Rachel. And, and her burial place in the middle of nowhere, uh, never getting to her destiny, did serve a purpose. Because the children of Israel, when they were being taken to Babylon, had to pass through Hefer Rachel. They had to go past the, the tomb of Rachel, the sepulcher of Rachel. And, and this is why the scripture says Rachel weeping for her children because they were not. And, and it's just the opposite. She was not. She died giving birth. Her children were alive and well. But, but it, the, 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 the fact that her, her tomb was there literally represents that the children of Israel, when they were being taken to Babylon, were being comforted because they went by that place and it was a sense of comfort to them before they left. So we understand that. So God did turn a mistake into a miracle. But on the deathbed in Genesis chapter 48, looking at verse 7, the scripture says that Jacob brings to closure. Hallelujah. There's some closure concepts uh, to Joseph concerning his mother's death. And G Genesis 48 verse 7 says, as for me, when I came from Padan, Rachel died by me in the land of Canaan in the way. Yet there was but a little way to come to Ephrath. I'm going to say that again. A little way to come to Ephrath. Say it with me. Just a little way to come to Ephrath. Now why is the scripture telling us that they left Padam Aram and all there was was just a little stretch left, uh, and they would have been at Ephrath. And this is a prophetic remez, if you will, to Genesis chapter 35. Because if we go to Genesis 35, Genesis 35 gives us the whole account of Rachel's death. Genesis 35 verse 16 says, And they journeyed from Bethel, and there was but a little way. Again, you have the scripture emphasizing that there was just a little bit further to go. She was almost there. She just had a little strip of land left. Just a little bit longer. And she would have arrived at the place that God wanted her. But she didn't get there. She died before her destiny was accomplished. I hope somebody's hearing this today. The little way means for the scripture to tell us that she died before and there was just a little way we see a little way mentioned in Genesis 48 and we see a little way mentioned in Genesis 35 because scripture wants us to know it was a premature death hello somebody <laughs> Rachel died a premature death because she was under a curse and the curse came out of her own husband's mouth and he didn't know it. And it was because before she left Padam Aram, she snuck into her father's bedroom and opened up his cupboard and took out every household god that he had and brought all the gods of Levon with her. Snuck them, hit them, hit them in her knapsack. And Jacob didn't know. And the Bible tells us when Lavan came looking for, uh, for J Jacob and all of his uh, the grandchildren and for all the cattle and everything that he had taken because he left at night to get away from Lavan to go back to the land of Israel because God had told him in a dream to do so. When he did, he said, well, the only thing I'm concerned about is why did you take my gods? And Jacob said, there is no other God here. And he said, if anybody here has gods, let them die. Hello, somebody. So he said, search the tents. So Lavan went and he searched the tents. He went into Bilhah's tent. There was no gods. He went into Leah's tent. There was no gods. He went into Yaakov's tent. There was no gods. And he came to Rachel's tent, and she was sitting on the gods. And the father, instead of getting up so her father could look, she lied to her father. And she said, I can't get up. There's a medical problem. And his father, her father didn't make her get up. 
But she was sitting on those gods. Hello, somebody. I'm going somewhere with this. There are some things that you've covered up. She was covering up those gods. She was covering up those issues. She was covering up that past pain. She was covering up all those feelings. She was covering up all that stuff. And tonight, God wants you to know no more cover up. God is saying if you take those things with you and you don't bring closure to those issues, you could die before your destiny. This is why the scripture says it. And we're looking at Genesis 35, 16. And they were going from, from Bethel. And there was but a little way to come to Ephrath. And Rachel travailed. And she had hard labor. And it came to pass that when she was in the hard labor, that the midwife said, fear not, you shall have this son also. And as she was departing, for she died. Hello, somebody. As she was departing, for she died. The scripture goes on to tell us. And the Bible says in verse 34, the Bible says, now Rachel had taken the images and put them in the camel's furniture, and she sat on them. And Laban searched all the tent, but he found them not. The tent also represents your your being. The tent represents your soul. The, the tent represents who you are. The tent represents your body as a temple of the Holy Spirit. And some of us have taken some of those issues that we never brought closure to. She never brought closure to the past life with her father. She never brought closure to certain issues. And God wants you to know that he wants you to get delivered tonight.